So thank you so much for agreeing to chat with me again. Can we take it back to the beginning? So can you introduce yourself a bit about who you are, where you've come from and when you joined the publishing industry? Yeah, so I'm originally from South Wales. I was born and brought up in Wales. I went to university in Durham to do English literature as my undergrad. I then moved back to South Wales for a year and so my plan was when I graduated from my university degree at Durham was I had a job in business writing lined up in London and um, it fell through at the last minute and at the time I thought oh this is terrible but then it was actually a complete godsend because within I think less than 24 hours I was like I'm meant to go into publishing I don't know I just hadn't really thought about it I thought that you needed a publishing degree or um, that I should have you know decided sooner which is mad because I was only what, like 21 when I made that decision. So from then on, I started trying to learn as much as I could about publishing. At the time I was waitressing for this tiny restaurant on the, in, in Barry where I, my parents live. Barry Island. I was just saving up as well for an MA in creative writing. My career is sort of two-sided in that I've been pursuing publishing and writing simultaneously. I started getting publishing experience remotely from home, my home in South Wales whilst I was working. And then also whilst I was studying at Manchester for my creative writing MA, I was working remotely for Parthian Books, who are the small publisher from Wales that I still work for now. Yeah, I mean, it all sounds very, very successful, but that's not the end of the success which we'll uh, come to. So obviously you achieved the Bookseller Rising Star Award 2021, which is fantastic. So many congratulations again. Did this come as a surprise? Were you expecting this? How did you find out about it? I suppose earlier in the year, I saw a different award which is also called a Rising Stars Award, run by the printing charity. So you apply for that yourself. And the reason I applied for it is because the award was for funding to sort of further your career. Because I work for a small publisher, I can't necessarily get lots of training for them because they just don't have the budget for that. Um, and because I work remotely, I'm... I've only ever sort of worked freelance and by myself. I really felt like I wanted to be proactive and, and get a bit more training and insight. And so I applied for the print charity Rising Star grant and was successful in that. And so got some money to join Book Machine and I was able to afford a, a bookseller subscription. So sort of just also a publishing training center course. So that was sort of things to sort of boost me a little bit as an individual. And then it was that that gave me the idea when I saw the bookseller one of like, huh, maybe the stuff that I've been doing with Parthian and also outside of Parthian as well would be enough to be considered for that. Because at this point, building up like a, a name for myself and a reputation is really, really important, especially because I am trying to sort of do that as an individual. And so I just mentioned it to my uh, to my manager at Parthian. He also thought it was a good idea and sort of went away and, and nominated me. Fantastic. So for anyone that doesn't understand how the Bookseller Rising Star Award works, so you've just sort of mentioned there that someone else nominates you. Do you know anything more about that kind of process? Is it just one nomination and that's it? You win or how does it work? So um, I believe you can nominate yourself. I think it's better coming from someone else <laughs> because they can, they're sort of then also a referee. It's quite informal, to be honest. It's not as formal as, as the sort of previous grant award that I had because the bookseller, it's about the platform. It's it's about sort of showing off, off these these rising stars in publishing so they come up with a list every year and you can either like I said you can nominate yourself or you someone who knows you nominates you or your employer nominates you and they basically write up a pitch for you saying these are the things that this person's been doing and so this is why they should be considered for as a rising star yeah there's not like strict rules and like on how it's done you just sort of email Tom at the bookseller and did you get to read that then and just sort of read those things about yourself I imagine that was quite weird but nice in a way yeah it was nice it was also my um my employer Richard at Parthian who's just like been absolutely wonderful from the day I like went for a first coffee asking him about publishing he he uh runs Parthian and he's the one that did the application for me and uh, he got in touch with lots of the people who I've sort of come into contact with through my two and a half years at Parthian doing various things. 
sort of asking them for quotes so then when I saw it all with like other people saying like oh it was great working with Catherine for this reason and I was like wow this is this is nice yeah <laughs> that must have been amazing you know since having not seen these people for ages because of Covid and moving out of Wales so it was, it was really nice yeah yeah fantastic um so let's go into a bit more about why you actually won the award and from what I understand, it's very kind of audio heavy. Is that right? Yeah, uh, especially more recently. I've had a, a real focus on audio, both in sort of the podcasting side of things, but also recently with audiobooks as well. The podcast series is called Queer Welsh Writing. Is that right? That you've uh, set up at Parthian. Can you like talk a bit more about that? What's that about? Yeah, so Parthian um, hasn't had a podcast before. Obviously, it's it's a very vogue thing for publishers at the moment to have their own podcast. It makes sense because you've already got this wealth of material in that you've got these authors that you can talk to and authors make for great yeah. podcast content. <laughs> I, not- I-, I noticed that this year we had a real... It wasn't really intentional. It kind of happened, but we had this real focus on um, queer writers this year in our list. I was sort of looking at the list thinking, wow, we've got some really uh, brilliant LGBT plus writing. You know, there's plenty of people who I've been working with this year on our list who would could come along and, and have discussions that would make a couple of great episodes for a first series. So I set up the Parthian podcast and I said right we'll, we'll try out a first series and the theme will be queer writing in Wales and it it was a matter of sort of pairing up writers or editors with other writers so there is a bit of a focus on our own books but then also other we invited poets who published with other publishers in Wales and other authors for four out of the five episodes are already out there the fifth episode is sort of on its way towards the end of the summer perfect and I will link that in the description of the video as well so people can go and check it out afterwards so how did you find that kind of like audio experience had you had experience doing podcasts and that before like creating those planning those and and was that kind of related to your role because you're a reading engagement editor is that right is that related to podcasts in any way my role is sort of intentionally loosely labeled because it it evolved from the work I was already doing, especially when the pandemic hit. That's when I really started doing more work for Parthian because I made myself useful digitally for them. So I adapted their launch strategy for online events and things like that, um, helped develop more online content that people would be able to access from their home during lockdowns. In terms of the podcasting it's something that I'd done before uh, when I was in Manchester I founded the uh, podcast for new writing which focuses on emerging writers a similar task and that's when I really got to grips with podcasting I did a masterclass with a podcaster called Hannah Hethman who's absolutely fantastic and really got me going and gave me some amazing advice and tips and that sort of then gave me the confidence to say to my publisher look why don't we do a podcast and be able to offer myself as the person to do it because I'd done it before especially having had to do it remotely because I think we'd done one episode in the studio for the podcast for new writing and then the pandemic hit so we had to very quickly adapt to remote podcasting and it's very doable yeah I was gonna say how different is that is it a lot more awkward or is it easier in some ways I remember when I did that masterclass in podcasting I remember thinking she went over remote recording and I'm thinking oh no I wouldn't want to do that if I if I podcast I want it to be in person and obviously I didn't have a choice a couple of months later it's actually fine there are more technical difficulties it's becoming more and more okay the more and more familiar people are. So, people have been used um, to technical difficulties and Wi-Fi issues and all that in the last couple of years. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it all sounds absolutely fantastic. You won the award, brilliant, it all got sort of publicized. Has anything changed for you since in terms of working life, in terms of people that you've met through the bookseller, anything like that? What what's changed for you? I mean, it would have been wonderful if this hadn't happened, you know now and I could have gone to London and and met the other rising stars and had those you know I'm such a believer in when people get in publishing get together good things happen (laughs) um uh so that's a shame but also it's been really fantastic to get that boost that like exposure it's it's come at an interesting point for me as well because I've moved out of Wales now I'm now based in the North. I'm still like a big advocate of small independent and also regional publishing. And so I 
intend to to stay here for a while but I'm also sort of looking to move on from Parthian and so I'm hoping that this gives me a little bit more of a boost looking for new work and looking for new opportunities I guess it's it, it comes as a recommendation <laughs> yeah it's it's early days at the moment but it does feel nice that it's something that I can bring up when I'm talking Absolutely. to new people or new employers um and that's really great yeah I mean your, your name is out there now and people will recognize that award as well so hopefully it brings really good things for you in the future now finally if people are thinking that they want to go and get themselves win them the rising star award from the bookseller in 2022 would you have any advice for them it it, it doesn't hurt to just put yourself forward or to like mention it to a colleague or a manager because it might feel as though what you're doing isn't making big wave isn't relevant on a wider stage but it, it, it is interesting and like on your level you're doing good things especially now when there's just so much to contend with I think it's really common for us to not think of ourselves as particularly special or um, impressive when actually almost everyone is in their own way so I would say don't feel shy about putting yourself forward for stuff like this because that exposure can be a real boost not only to like your profile but to your confidence as well I would also say if you have ideas see if you can do something with them because it, it's funny I think there's a point when you come out of university and, and you get onto the more like professional stage you realize that when you have ideas and you think oh maybe this should be something that started it's not just setting up a society you know at university or like a club at school you can actually do real stuff you know like not that working well. stuff at university is <laughs> not real but like you have you do have that power to like if an opportunity is not there create it do you think um, that was easier because you were at a smaller indie publisher and would potentially be harder say one of the big five yeah Absolutely. Like I've been really lucky in some ways that I'm given a lot of freedom to try things out and they let me have a go if I have a good idea and I'm willing to, to, to try it. That's not always the case, but then, you know, there's been so many great things been set up in the last year or so outside of people's roles. I mean, like you running your YouTube channel and like uh, <laughs> the, there's the indie publishing newsletter that's been coming out. That's like fantastic. And just, yeah. you know, all these like, all these side projects, I just think if you can, if you've got an idea for a side project, do it because it's those things that make you stand out. They're also great fun and you, you meet lots of brilliant people. Thank you. I just always find it so interesting listening to people about how they've come into publishing and what they've done while they're in publishing and yeah, like hearing other people's side hustles, what they've been doing outside of their nine to five as well. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's fab. Like I said, when you get publishers together, it's always so interesting, the conversations that come out of it. Yeah.